Hello, welcome to my channel. Today, I want to teach you about the ultimate toolkit for launching your SaaS product with Bubble. If you're a solopreneur, you're an entrepreneur, or you're simply a developer who's looking forward to launching their product with Bubble, today, you're going to learn how to ideate and how to all the way to launching your product. During this tutorial, I'm going to cover ideating, development, database design, marketing, the do's and don'ts when launching your product. So I'm pretty sure that you're going to learn a whole lot at the end of this video so if you're just visiting this channel for the very first time do well to leave a like leave a comment and do well to subscribe also so that you will always get notified whenever i launch a new course or whenever i share a new thought on youtube let's get started learning how to build SaaS product with bubble In this first section of the tutorial, we're going to learn about idea validation and idea generation. There's a whole lot to do. Before you start development or before you start sharing on social media, then I'm going to develop stuff. You have to understand and you have to determine if that idea is worth sharing. So let's get started with learning how to come up with idea, how to research our idea, and how to find the right market for our idea. In this first phase of idea validation and market research, the first thing you want to do is to thoroughly research your market. You know, I know a lot of persons would say, why not just go ahead and build a product because the competitor is actually building that product? Go ahead and build a product because you think that a competitor is building it. Yeah, it's a good thing for the person to, to be building your type of product or to be in the same uh, niche as you. But one thing that works these days, especially if you're somebody, if you're a solopreneur or you're somebody who's just getting started, building for a niche market, you know, at that beginning, knowing that that market can become so wide, it's going to do you a whole lot of good. So it'd be a whole lot of good for you to build for a niche market, knowing that that market can be, get really, really bigger. So the goal is to thoroughly research your market. Once you get the idea, you have to understand where where exactly is that, is, where exactly am I going to find these people? Where exactly uh, um, are these persons located, right? But I know that we talked about ability to generate idea so mostly it's it's so cool that when you ever you're launching a SaaS product you just want to scratch your own itch so when i mean scratch your own itch you want to solve your own problem so recently i i had the, a personal a personal request for myself so i just wanted to speak into a mic and have an ai rephrase the statement and send it back to me you know just save it from for whenever i need it so i want to speak something like um i have an idea Probably I would just say I have an idea to run Facebook ads to this audience, to this audience. So I'm going to have this AI too. It's going to rephrase it back to me in a way that I like it. So what I did was I created a mobile application using um, Flutterflow, not with Bubble Doe. I created a mobile application and I had that running. Uh, or, and, and I had that running. So that's me scratching my own edge. I know there are a lot of persons who will be waiting to use that same, that kind of tool, who have that same problem. And then we can just, you know, give it to those persons and then they can become paying customers but other places that you can basically find um you can find idea uh, discussion you know forums when you get to forums you can actually find ideas in this place for example you can check out twitter uh, especially what's trending on twitter you can really check out what's trending on twitter and see what people are talking about right what you you, you find what people are talking about what people are talking about, what they are really, um, you know, what kind of discussion they are having. For example, if you want to have something like, um, search for something like build in public, build in public, or would say something like test to speech. So if, if I'm building the test to speech software, I just want to join the discussion. You want to join the discussion and see what people are talking about. So you can see, like, this is just going to give you most of the things that person are talking about. You would see competitors. You would see, um, as you would just be able to join the discussion. And following this discussion will likely lead to some solution, right, that you don't have or that you might want to have. So another way that you can actually, you know, validate your idea and also um, now, another way that you can generate idea is to also use forums like Reddit, you know, join Facebook groups, join Slack groups, look for Slack, Slack groups, just type it on Google as a Slack group for your target audience. 
right? Slack group for your target audience. You just join the discussion in those places and you will likely be able to find these ideas. So validating your ideas also goes the same way. Talk about your ideas on Twitter. Um, see what other persons are doing with your same idea and talk to your target audience and see if they would like something um, that you're building, that you intend to build. Not building, that you intend to build. And one of the ways that you can actually see if people like what you're building is if they are willing to pay for it. Right. If they are willing to pay for it, and that's fine. But if they are not willing to pay for it, then you really don't want to um, ask them. Right. Because if, if it's a problem, if it's going to be a big problem, people will be willing to pay for it. But if it's not a prop, such a problem, people won't be willing to pay for it. And lastly, you also want to ensure that there's a demand for your product. So. A cool way to, to, to figure out if there's a demand for your product is to use simple Google search, right? This is Google search. Simple Google search, like so. Right? And I'm just going to type the keyword. So you're going to type the keyword. Let's say test, right? Test to speech. So this is a simple keyword, and we're seeing test to speech. We're seeing how many results we have here, right? And we can actually see, you can see how many results we have here, and we can just, you know, read and see what other persons are searching for. You can see, like, people are searching test to speech online, test to speech that is free, test to speech converter online, test to speech app, Google test to speech, test to speech generator. You see, people are, people are searching stuff like this, and you will see other persons who have built the same thing that, you, that you're planning to launch, right? So if you want to, if you're thinking, okay, now that I think the other persons are building the same thing that I want to launch, how do I really differentiate myself? One of the ways to differentiate yourself is pricing. You either do it more expensive or do it way cheaper than your customers are doing it. You make, you do it faster, right? You might see, oh, I think my, my computers are slow and I, and I can do it way faster. Yes, you can do it way, way faster. And lastly, you can also do it in such a way that you make changes quickly. You ship in, you ship more features as fast as possible. So stay on validating your idea. Another way that you can validate your idea is to create some sort of a, um, a landing page. Yeah, create a landing page with pricing on top of it and see how people pay, right? Create a landing page. You know, we talked about going to... We talked about finding communities, right? Where your target audience belong to. So now that you found those communities and you've joined the discussions and you still have, you, you're still very sure that you ought to be that product, a cool thing that you want to do is to get people to pay for your product even before you, you begin building with no code tool or you begin, um, to code it. So what you can do is to create landing pages with uh, a tool like card, right? Put all your, um, Put all the things, all the benefit of your products and everything that you think your product is going to do, right? Uh, for example, I'm going to show you something like a, a cool landing page that you can create. Um, it's, um, so let's just imagine that you're creating a, 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 you're creating a product that would make finance, you know, finance made simple for small businesses, right? This is the kind of product that you want to create. So what you want to do is to allow people join the waiting list, right? There's a waiting list, but people are paying for it. And then when it comes to the pricing, you can actually um, allow people to join for a lifetime, you know, maybe a lifetime or to get like maybe 60% discount, 50% discount when you finally launch. So one thing that this does to you, it tells you that you're solving a real problem, and secondly, if your product is going to require finances for you to actually push it, it gives you the much needed money to build the project at the end of the day. Or sometimes you can ask people to sign up, but you don't charge their card. If you're using a service like Stripe, they can sign up and not charge your, their card. And you won't charge your card. So the day you launch, you can go back to Stripe and charge those cards, right? Let's just say you're going to be meeting an investor and you have like a thousand persons who have put their card and say they're going to pay you uh, $40 a month right? That's going to be really huge for validating your product, knowing that people are willing to pay even before you begin uh, developing the app or you begin selling your value proposition to them, right? So now that we're done, we're done with that, let's go next. We'll go to UI user experience design. So when it comes to user experience design, 
it can be uh, really stressful for a lot of persons, especially if you're building for the very first time and you barely know anything about colors, you know, lines, angles, and all of those things. What I really advise is that find a way to put your ideas on paper. You know, get a number of paper, sticky notes, sheets of paper, your books, your diary. Find a way to just draw it, take it from your head and put it on paper. Right. Once you're able to get it from your head and put it on paper, then you'll be able to move forward with it. Don't really go ahead and start looking for very fancy, um, very, very fancy tools like Figma, like, you know, uh, Figma, like Sketch at the beginning. But what I do advise is that get it on from your head and put it on paper. Then once you get it on paper, and then once you get it on paper, you can begin to look for um, designs that look look like yours. For example, this is uh, Dribble, right? On Dribble, you can really find very cool inspiration, right? You can really find very cool inspiration uh, that fits you. You know, very very cool inspiration that really fits you. And you can come here to think, okay, I think I want to design a fintech landing page. Let's a fintech landing page, right? So I'm going to just search for FinTech landing page and it's going to come up with a couple of options for me. So you can see like, you know, breaking down financial barriers, you know, lots of landing pages. But really, the reason why you sketch down is to know what you want. So when you come here, you can basically begin to um, see what looks like what you want, what doesn't look like what you want and begin to um, take some, leave some, you know, just the way you want to do it. And then once you're good with this, if you're good with the tool like Figma, you can come back here and resketch what's on your mind. If you're good, uh, uh, you know, you can do that. But another tool that I use, it's Visily. Visily is a very cool tool. It enables you to design low fidelity design and high fidelity diagrams with uh, their tool without paying a dime. And also you can... Um, you can get templates. So if you click on this screen templates, you can, you know, get a head start. You can get a head start. You can start designing from where other person stop. Say, for example, I'm building a web application. I can come here and find some screens. So they have screens, they have app screens, they have flows, and they have diagrams. Right, I can come back here. I can look like I look for a flow that fits what I want to do and tailor those flow to meet my own needs. Right, that's what I can do. I'll just look for a screen that fits my need, tailor those screens to fit me, and I wouldn't have to design so much. So I can have things like the login page, the authentication screen, everything done for me. So let's say, for example, we are still on the AI thing, you know, we're looking for an AI chatbot. That's what we're creating. Uh, you know, you can see there are lots of, lots of, um, uh, template that we can use here. So if I click on this, it's going to tell me the pages that are available. So I have the landing page, the sign up page. So I have all of this page right, right here. Can you see it? I have all of this page right here and I can see exactly what I'm doing on this page. Do you get it? So let's say I'm creating the site that will enable people to chat with PDF. You know, chat with PDF or chat with your spreadsheet as fast as possible. Uh, um, and they're only paying only a few bucks a week or a day. I can actually create something like this and it works. And if I want to use this template, I just click on use template and it will also generate this, this same template on my URL and I can continue from where they, from where this template stops. And what's funny is that many times you can actually have everything you need from this template right there. I, I hope you understand, right? So uh, uh, another thing that you want to do is that don't keep your interface too clunky. You don't have to launch with all the features that you have. Remember, we are building for somebody. We're building for one person. So launch with one single feature and you'll be really fine. I see a lot of founders, they want to launch and they want to build all the features at once. No, you don't have to build all the features at once. One single feature is a whole, is, a, is enough. F give it to your target audience, get feedback, and then you can come back and keep adding more features to it. Don't do too much when it comes to interface. One color plus black and white and gray, it's a whole lot to choose from, right? Don't be all over the place. I hope you get that. So Welcome back. Hope you're getting everything so far. In this section of the tutorial, we're going to understand Bubble. Why Bubble is the right fit for your idea and when Bubble is not the right fit for your idea. Some persons want to use Bubble to build everything. But I can tell you that with Bubble, you can't really build everything. You can only build the right product, the right fit for Bubble. And sometimes you want to use Bubble as your front end and use, 
you want, sometimes you want to use bubble as your front end and use something else as your back end we're going to explore all of these options in this section of the tutorial familiarizing yourself with the bubble interface component and the workflow it's what you have to do so i know i've written here that mass you have to master bubble visual programming language for building complex functionalities but really you don't really have to do all this thankfully i have a bubble a I have a video, a very four and a half hour video that teaches you bubble and you know most of the things you'd want to know in order for you to launch your product. But you, it's not like you have to finish that that course before you launch your product. But you just have to understand the concepts, you know, basic concept like authentication, like security you know like workflows you just have to understand this concept as it relates to your mobile application i know there are things like apis which we're going to talk about later but you really have to get a hang of it even if you're going to be giving it to your developers so build for you it'd be good that you just read up on bubble and see what bubble can do and what bubble cannot do yeah so talking about what Bubble can do and what Bubble cannot do, I know a lot of people want to use Bubble to build um, web application, to build um, uh, websites, to build SaaS application and the rest, uh, games and a whole lot. I wouldn't advise you to, if you have an idea that has to do with games, except maybe it's just a some trivia game, you know, that people can play. It's up. But if it's something that requires fast compu computation and fast and search, I don't really think that Bubble would be the best tool for you to build it. Uh, things like game is, an, is a no-no for me when it comes to Bubble. And if you're building stuff that users have to search a whole lot, it's either you're very good with search or you don't want to build it with Bubble because there's a whole lot of cost when it comes to doing too many search uh, in Bubble right and if it's a mobile application there are a lot of moving parts when it comes to building mobile apps in bubble i would definitely say that you find an alternative to like flutterflow adalo to build your mobile application but if you're building things that has to do with software as a service then it's a good thing that you use bubble because that's what bubble it's built for and if you think that oh if you're building websites i wouldn't advise you to build websites with bubble uh because it's not really it's not really built for websites it's actually built for building web apps if you're going to be building websites use a tool like frima right for example the app i just showed you uh the landing page i just showed you a few seconds ago which is this one uh was created with frima frima is a cool tool the learning curve is not so much you can build your own website right there so what i personally do when i'm building web apps with bubble is that i build a website somewhere else with say, say like frima and then i build a web application with um bubble and then pair both of them together and if it's a web uh, if it's a mobile application i get to build the website with frima and build the mobile application with um Sort of flow. So when you, when you think of the things you want to build and the feature that would come out, that would tell you, okay, I think Bubble is the right tool or, or I have to choose a different tool entirely. So another thing you have to, so this is the bubble inter, this is the bubble interface. So you would see a list of projects right here, and this is the bubble editor. Uh, yeah, it's some so it's not so much of what you see is what you get kind of editor, but. Um, yeah, you just have to familiarize yourself with things like the design banner, the design part of it, the workflow, database styles, and hopefully you'll be able to create something as cool as this, right? This is pretty cool. This is a project that I'm currently working on. Um, it's really cool. It's a uh, it's a software as a service for mentoring. So I'm currently working on this project, and you can see how clean the project is. So uh, uh, that's basically what you need to know with Bubble. I wouldn't, I would say, like, like, I would say, build a one feature application and launch as fast as possible. And then when you're comfortable with that launch, you can go ahead and keep adding features to it. Building one feature enable you to launch as fast as possible. So you don't take so much time adding features. And after, when you're done building, there will be no one to use your products anymore. If you want to learn more about Bubble, you can check out my YouTube channel. And also, you can also check out Bubble Extensive Tutorials. Uh, Bubble Extensive Tutorials, uh, their documentation is to show you how to use Bubble always. So another thing to think about is your database design, right? Database design. When you're building with Bubble, it's very efficient that you draw your database in a sheet of paper first before going to bubble so this is the bubble database right 
This is a Bubble database. Bubble has something called data types. It has stuff called app data. So these are data types, right? Like you see channels and then app data, you have channels. And you have something called option sets and then you have file manager. So it's very cool that you design your Bubble relationship, your Bubble database relationship on a piece of paper before you come to Bubble. When I mean design it, I mean think of all the now. You know, a noun is the name of person, animal, place of things. Think of all the things that have name in your application and see how they connect with each other. For example, if I have a creator right on this application that creator is going to have a mentor and that mentor is going to have some mentorship and that mentorship is going to send messages and that message is going to have status and that status is going to have notification do you understand right so for example a creator when a creator comes into the application, they're going to be added to a school and that school is going to have a student and that student is going to have a subscription and that subscription belongs to a user. So you have to begin to think all the aspect of your application, your database in terms of a now. What will this person be able to do? If you're creating a real estate SaaS application, so you're thinking, what will this app be? Who, which of the real estate uh, profile does this fit? Let's say it's a landlord. So you're coming, you're asking yourself, what will a landlord be able to do? in my application right do you get it what will a landlord be able to do in my application let's say a landlord can can uh, um, a landlord can create a house right a landlord can add a house and then you have to think what will a house what is a house attached to a house is going to have rooms what will a, what, what is a room attached to so that's how you want to think of your database well, right and another thing to consider is workflow and logic this is basically the same this is basically uh this also goes back to bubble you have to think of your bubble workflow and logic to make sure that it's really 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 cool for example uh this is what this is bubble and this is a workflow so workflow it tells you exactly what where exactly do you want people to go from here when they click a button so if i go to a page that has a button so this is a page that has a button and I'm asking myself, what exactly do I want people to do when they click on this button? When they click on a particular button, what do I want them to do? Uh, so when they click on this button, create, what do I want them to do? That's going to be a workflow. So you want to think about these things extensively. For example, in our case study application, the, the, the real, real estate application, if the landlord click on the house, what do you want to happen? If the, if the landlord click on a room, what do you want to happen? So these are things that you want to think about when you're building your SaaS application, right? So I know we've been saying think, 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 because trust me, 90% of the build happen in your head, right, on paper, and only 10% of the build happen on bubble. So if you can and think it on paper, there's a likelihood that you'll be able to build it on Bubble. And don't forget responsive design. Uh, on Bubble, it's super easy for you to test if your design is responsive or not. Right? It's super easy. Just go to your responsive tab and, uh, you know, show. Show what you want to show on your responsive tab and reset. You know, reset and see if your app is responsive or if it's not responsive. So you have to check if it's responsive because a lot of persons will be accessing your app via mobile and some of them will be doing so via desktop. So you want to build for both of the screen, right? And you, you would have to consider, you know, interactions and screen space when you're doing this. Don't worry, this documentation will be available in the comment section and all you have to do is to download it. And number seven... Number seven, you have to think of API integrations with external services, right? API integration with external services. For example, I kind of build with OpenAI a lot. You know, OpenAI, especially if you're working on uh, um, on AI-based centered application, and I also build with BuildShip a whole lot. So I build with BuildShip and I build with OpenAI. These are API services. What API does is that it helps you to extend your application. Say, for example, in your application, you want to know about, um, you want your users to be familiar with things like Bitcoin. You want them to be familiar with, um, maybe you're creating an application that, um, okay, like the application we talked about where it takes in your speech, convert it to text, right? And turns it into a very beautiful story. That's going to require a third-party application. If you're going to call that, it's going to require a long time. But if you are giving it to a test battery application, you can have your result in 
in minutes, right? And then the next thing you want to do is to test it. Test and quality assurance. Once you've once you once you're done building your application, give it to a few friends. You know, send it to a few friends. Send it to a few family members to actually test for bugs. You know, basically what you're doing is that you're just testing to see if your app does what you say it does. That's what testing is all about. If you say people are going to be able to log into your application, you have to you have to show it. If you say people will be able to sign out of your application, then you have to show it. These are just the things that you have to test about. If you say your application is going to help people keep their medical records, just test against those things. Will it keep your medical records? Yes or no. And then um, now you're thinking of deployment and, ho and hosting. Deploying on Bubble is super straightforward. It comes with uh, SSL certificate, right? It's own SSL certificate. And um, Bubble, it's reliable when it comes to hosting, right? But the thing about Bubble is that you can host your, your database somewhere else. There are other third-party database services like Xano, like Superbase, that you can use for your Bubble. And the only thing you have to do with Bubble is the front end, right? The front end, I mean, what people can see, but you're hosting the data somewhere else right those are things that you can do uh because those kind of stuff it really aids performance a whole lot but it depends on how you built your your mobile application your bubble application it depends on how you built your SaaS application it can be really really performance performance focused and the performance can be really really great depending on how you've built it so if you're very comfortable once you've built the next thing you want to do is to deploy the application so the whole world knows what you've built. Don't forget, before you deploy, you have to think of security, right? Bubble will definitely tell you to think of security. Uh, um, for example, in the database section, you want to think of privacy. When I mean privacy, it means who can see what, you know? Who can actually see what? You can see these are all privacy rules telling you what you can see and what you cannot see. It's very important that these privacy rules are turned on so that you don't have one person seeing what it, you don't have a user that's not paying seeing what then they're actually not supposed to see right so welcome to the last section of the tutorial where we discuss marketing marketing can be complex if you do not know how to do it but it can be really really simple if you decide to market with what you're used to so i'm going to show you some abcs when it comes to marketing how to get your first one how to get your first customer, how to get your 10, how to get your 100 customers, depending on the kind of product you are selling. Don't worry, you will, most of this marketing will not require experience, it will not require you spending huge, huge amount of money to accomplish any of those tasks. It's just going to be simple things that you're really used to. Yeah, this is the last session. This is the last session, right? Uh, marketing and launch strategy. Um, I will always say this, that you don't have to develop a comprehensive marketing plan, right? It doesn't have to be comprehensive for the word comprehensive. You just have to do what suits your market. For me, I will always advise people I build for that when they are getting started, once you start building or once you, once you start building a mobile application, immediately start marketing. Right. Once you know your idea is valid, once you validated your idea, start marketing as fast as possible. Start building in public. If you create the landing page, tell everybody that you've created the landing page. If you don't sign up, tell everyone you've done the sign up. Build in public. Right. Build in public. If you have an email uh, newsletter, always tell them that this is what you're doing. This is how you're doing. If you belong to forums, always share. Always share what exactly you're doing at that point in time in your application. It's super, super awesome that you keep building in public. It gives you energy to keep going and it gets your product. It makes your product very, very, very attractive to people who will likely use their product. So for me, I would say, uh, as you're launching, these are, these are a few things that you must have as you, as you be prepared to launch. Uh, first of all, you need to have a landing page, which is super cool. This is where people will learn more about your product, even before you put it in the market. Number two, you need to have a, a feature page, you know, like all the features that's in your application. It's cool that you have it. Number three, you have to have a me versus you page, right? Like you versus your competitor, what your competitors are doing right and what they are not, what, what you are doing even better it's good that you have that in your application so you want to have a terms and condition page privacy poli policy page and you have you want to have some like how to blog post like three different how to blog posts that shows people how to use your application and then you can move from there 
right? Don't forget, building in public, it's very, very important because it enables you to attract users and drive adoption. And then you can think of social media, you can think of email campaign. But one thing that I would definitely advise is that you focus on one marketing on one marketing channel at a time. Don't be everywhere. Look for where your, your target audience are and stay there for the longest time possible, as long as it's bringing you um, results. So if it's bringing you results, you want to stay there as fast as possible. You want to stay there for as long as possible, as long as it's building your result. Because if you spread on too, if you go to too many platforms, you're going to spread yourself too thin and you will not be able to focus. If YouTube, that's where, that's how your audience learn, stay there. If Twitter is where your audience learn, stay there. If it's Reddit, stay there. If it's Facebook, stay there for the longest time possible and don't go to everything that is shining all around the place. And don't forget to install analytics you need to be able to track what exactly you're doing right and what you're doing wrong remember track or keep analytics see your conversion rate see how much you're spending on marketing if you are see how many users you have and see how much you're being paid and see how users are engaging with your product in your application that's what you want to do exactly yeah thank you very much that was hard right thank you very much for working on this journey with me i'm pretty sure now you understand how to think of your own size product how to understand if bubble is the right fit for you how to get started with marketing and you know every other things that you learned in between if you if you've learned all these things why not just put it to good use you know go get started with building your own size product if you need any help getting your SaaS product from idea in your head and into the market, feel free to reach out to me and I'll definitely help you. There's a link in the description that you can use to reach out to me. Click on that link and you'll be able to book a call with me. It might be consultancy, it might be development. Just reach out to me and I'll definitely see how I can help you get your dream from your head into the market. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon.